Hello, my lovely scientists. Welcome to Joy Learning Basic Classroom. My name has always been Eric Owusu. You can also call me Cell of Ghana. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV, at Joy Learning TV, and be watching most of our videos over there. This lesson is for Basic 5. Take your pens and books and as we get ready to dive into our lesson for today. Our topic for today is reversible and irreversible changes. Reversible and irreversible changes. So let's look at the objectives. By the end of the lesson, you are to explain the term reversible change to explain the term irreversible change and give examples of both reversible and irreversible changes and explain the terms boiling, freezing, condensation, and solidification. And the last states three differences between reversible and irreversible changes. All right, so let's get started. Our starter for the lesson is for you to define or explain what matter is. So what is matter? And to state the three states of matter. Your time is just a minute and it starts now. Welcome back. So let's look at your answer for the starter. So matter, as you already know, is anything that has mass and volume. When we say volume, it means it can occupy space. Anything at all. So as you are sitting down there, you are matter. All the things surrounding you are matter. And matter can exist in three states. You have solid, liquid, and gas. Solid, liquid, and gas. All right. So, there are changes that occur among the states of matter. Changes occur among the states of matter. And these changes can be grouped into, so we have the reversible change and the irreversible change. Reversible change and irreversible change. So we are going to talk about the first one, reversible change. When we say reversible change, what do you mean? Okay, so reversible change is a change in which no new thing or substance is formed. So take note of this. It is a change in which no new substance is formed. It is a change which can happen backward. That is, you can reverse it. Okay, so for example, when you put water in a freezer, the water can be solidified, can become solid. And that water that has become solid, you can turn it back to liquid. So that is what we call reversible. You can reverse it to its original state. So freezing 
or solidification of water is reversible change. Freezy is when a liquid changes into a solid when cooled. So when you change liquid into solid, we say freezing or solidification. All right. Another one, melting is also reversible change. When ice or solid is removed from the freezer and kept for some time, it melts. So when you remove your ice block from your freezer, you put it down, it melts. You can also change it back to solid state by putting it in a freezer. So melter is when a solid changes into liquid when heated, when heat is applied to it. So melting of shea butter is also a reversible change because you can reverse it to its original state. Good. So we say reversible change is a change in a substance that does not result in production of a new substance. No, you can re it's a change that you can reverse it to its original state. So no new substance is formed in the melting and freezing process of water. Therefore, freezing and melting of water are reversible changes. Freezing and melting of water are reversible changes. No new substance is formed over there. Three, boiling or evaporation of water. Boiling is the action of bringing a liquid into the temperature at which bubbles, at which you see bubbles, and then it turns into vapor. Anytime you heat something and you see bubbles on top of it, like a liquid substance, it means that it is boiling. And boiling, and then the vapor will rise up. Now, the vapor, when cooled, can come back to its liquid or water state. So, boiling or evaporation of water is also a reversible change because one, no new substance is formed when you heat water and the water evaporates. The vapor can still be cooled down like you have water cycle. So the vapor cools down in the atmosphere and falls back as rain. So no new substance is formed over there. So boiling or evaporation is also a reversible change. So like, as I said, water cycle. So the vapor, when water bodies get heated, it rises, the vapor rises. And when vapor cools down in the atmosphere, it falls back as rain. So it condenses and falls back as rain. So condensation is also a reversible change. So when water vapor is cooled, it turns back to water. That is, it condenses. Condensation is when gas changes to liquid when cooled. No new substance is formed during boiling and condensation. So they are all reversible changes. Now when you take a piece of paper, and you crumple it. You can still straighten it to become very, to become very straight. So crumpling of paper is also a reversible change because no new substance is formed. And the crumpled paper can be changed to its original shape. So take note of this. In reversible change, no new substance is formed. And that change, you can reverse it back to its original state. Now we have another method called sublimation. Now sublimation is when solid changes to gas without passing through a liquid state upon application of heat. So when you heat iodine crystals, the iodine crystal will change directly from solid to gas, to vapor, without turning to liquid first. No, this one, when you heat it, it's turns to vapor, and that is what we call sublimation. Sublimation is when a solid changes to gas without passing through a liquid state upon application of heat. So your camphor, when you put camphor down, after some time, you see that the camphor becomes very small. So it has sublime that change to what? 
to gas. All right. So on your screen, let's watch this video. Iodine crystals, when it is heated, iodine crystal, very solid, when it is heated, it will change to gas. It, so we say it will sublime. And the process is what we call sublimation. Sublimation. So on your screen, when you heat, you see, when you heat the iodine crystals, it changes to gas. Now, when you cool the gas, the gas will condense and come back to the solid state. So we are going to cool the gas at the bottom of the flux you can see over there will be formed so many particles of iodine crystals. So watch carefully. The bottom of the flux over there will turn into solid iodine or crystals of iodine. So it means that you can, when the gas is cooled down, it changes to solid. And that is what I said earlier on, sublimation. Solid changes directly to gas. And when the gas is cooled down, it turns back to solid state. So sublimation is also a reversible change. Now, another one is irreversible change. So I hope you know that already. An irreversible change will be what? A change in a substance that leads to the formation of a new substance. You cannot reverse it to its original state. That means you cannot, it cannot happen backward. It cannot be reversed. And also no new substance is formed with the irreversible change. So for example, burning of paper produces ash. You cannot change the ash to paper again. And that is irreversible change. Irreversible change. Good. When food such as rice is cooked, the cooked rice cannot be uncooked to get to the original grains of rice again. Cooking, therefore, is what? A reversible change because you cannot reverse it. Rusting of iron, another one is rusting of iron. When iron comes into contact with moisture and air, it rusts. Once iron rusts, it cannot be reversed to its original position. So rusting, therefore, is a reversible change. You cannot reverse it to its original shape. And rusting is the wearing away of the surface of iron when it comes into contact with air and water. So rusting is what? A reversible change. All right. So now I want you to give me just three differences between reversible and irreversible change based on all that you've heard me say. Just give me three differences between reversible and irreversible changes. And your time starts right away. my lovely learners so let's look at your answers so differences between reversible and irreversible changes one reversible no new 
substance or a thing is formed, as we look at that one earlier. When you go to irreversible, a new thing is formed, like burning of paper. The paper will burn into what? Ashes. Number two, under reversible, a substance can return to its original state. When you go to irreversible, a substance cannot return to its original state. Number three, the chemical properties of the substance do not change. So with the reversible, the properties of the substance are maintained. Now when you go to irreversible, the chemical properties of the substance changes. All right. Good. So, what have you learned today? We talk about reversible. It's a change where no new substance is formed. Irreversible, a change where a new substance is formed. We look at some of examples of reversible change, boiling, melting, solidification, and crumpling of paper are examples of irreversible changes. When you go to uh, burning, cooking, and rusting are examples of irreversible change, sorry. The boiling, melting, and solidification, and crumpling of paper are examples of reversible change. And burning, cooking, and rusting of iron are examples of irreversible changes. So take note of that. Right. So our time has come to an end. And you are to do this assignment and send it to us, joylearningtv at myjoyonline.com. joylearningtv at myjoyonline.com. So take your... Joy Learning TV at myjoyonline.com. Joy Learning TV at myjoyonline.com. So let us write our assignment, write the email address down, and then let's go back to our assignment and then write them down. Joy Learning TV at myjoyonline.com. All right, so the assignment. One, which of the following changes are reversible change or irreversible change? Which of the following changes are reversible change or irreversible change? A, boiling an egg. So you are to indicate whether it is reversible or irreversible. B, rusting of iron, burning of charcoal, inflating a balloon, freezing water, melting ice, Dissolving salt in water. And two, melting shea butter is an irreversible change. True or false? All right. So this is your assignment. Do it and show them to your mommy or your daddy. Or, as I said, you send it to us at Joy Learning. TV at myjoyonline.com. Joy Learning TV at myjoyonline.com. Well, my lovely scientists, this is where time will allow us. Remember, you take your lessons seriously and make sure your channel is always here on Joy Learning TV. And also subscribe to our YouTube channel at Joy Learning TV, at Joy Learning TV. Well, this has been your science facilitator. Eric Ousu.
till we meet again. Bye-bye.